Good morning, you wonderful people of the internet, wherever you are on this planet. Good morning. It is uh, Friday morning for me, and I am waiting to get this off my trailer so that I can go home. The goal for today is to get home before supper time. I think I'll make it. I'm just waiting for them to get here to unload me. And be unloaded right around here. So we'll get that done, and we'll start headed home. They're sitting right over there. Set this storage site here. So that's where it is right there. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve barricades and one box. So if they don't believe my proof of delivery, here's the second proof of delivery. I brought it right there. Travel Center used to be Husky. A little 
some coffee. Oh yeah, they got cones here so that you don't fall into their pothole. It's a bottomless hole, I'm sure. You never hit the bottom. is now look at that huh so they're doing the petro pass thing where they have the def in a heated separate uh, container here that way the def pumps don't freeze on us in winter time like they do with flying j all the time as soon as it gets down to like minus 20 they have to shut the def pumps off because they freeze they weren't built or insulated properly I guess I didn't sleep as well as I do sometimes. Isn't that weird how like sometimes like you can get eight hours of sleep one night, wake up the next morning, feel perfect. The next night, same thing, eight hours, perfect. The next night you get eight hours or maybe even nine hours. Wow. You wake up and the whole day you feel like you got two hours. It's like... That took entirely way too long. <laughs> It's all right, it's all right. They had two bean to cup coffee machines in there. That's the only coffee machines they have. That's the only way to get coffee. One of them was out of order. They're identical. And they got the beans in the bowls on the top, right? The one that was out of order was fully stocked of beans. There was medium, there was decaf, and there was dark. I wanted the medium. The one that was working was all empty of beans. No one had refilled it. So I went to the counter, I said, excuse me, uh, the coffee machine uh, is, is out of beans. And he says, oh, it's out of order. There's also a language barrier between us two. I should, I should mention that. That adds to the frustration. Language barrier. So I was trying to explain to him that the, the, there is one that's out of order, but the one that's not out of order is out of beans. But the one that is out of order has lots of beans. So I was trying to say, uh, I was wondering if we could take the beans out of the coffee bowls like, and just exchange them and put them like just swap them because they're exactly the same you could take the bowls off the top of the machine and just swap them out with the ones with beans in it and put it on the one that works right is this making sense to you uh, i thought it was a pretty simple concept that i was trying to get across and then so they walked over there and i was trying to show them if you take the bowls off the top here the empty ones off of this one then you take the full ones from that one you put it on this one and then you take the empty ones that you took off of this one and put it on that one because that one's not working anyways it doesn't matter if they're empty if it's on couldn't get it couldn't get it. so i almost had to do it myself and i was trying to show them this is what i mean just take the beans that are here and put them in the ears ones but no then they spent half an hour foraging around the entire store in the back room for more beans to fill up the bowls the empty bowls on top of the one that worked and this is what i meant after like 15 minutes they came back and looked and they looked all confused and we couldn't communicate and i was just take these from here and you just put them in here and everybody's happy yeah. couldn't get it so I almost yeah I almost had to physically show them myself like I picked up one I said see these come off 
You take the empty ones off, right beside it. These ones are all full. They're on the machine that's out of order. You just put them over here. It's like half an hour trying to figure this out. And eventually, instead of just exchanging the bowls, no, 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 no. He, he left the empty bowls on the coffee, ma the, the coffee machine. He could have just taken them off and swapped them, right? No, he left those on there. He opened the top. He took the, the full one off of the out of order machine and proceeded to try to pour them into the bowl, the empty bowl that was exactly identical on the machine that worked. Spilling coffee beans everywhere. I mean everywhere. Big mess. And at this point I didn't say anything. I was just sitting there quietly. I was just thinking to myself, uh, you didn't have to pour it in because that would make a mess. You, you, can, you took that one off of that machine. This one also comes off of this machine. You swap them. So I have to tell you that story. I wasted a half an hour here trying to get a coffee. So I figured I could waste at least another five minutes telling you the story because it's pretty funny. I'm not even upset. It's just hilarious. Like, how did this, how did, how did that not, how did that just, whoa, how did that go over your head? What happened? Like, what's, this, what's the story here? Where, I even showed you exactly what I'm, uh, well, that was fun. All right. And that's why I believe it is so important to be able to effectively communicate properly in English if you are serving the English public, or French, if you're in Quebec, but we're not in Quebec. It's very important to be able to communicate with people. I mean, if we could have just communicated with each other, it would have been a, a two-minute problem-solving situation. Would have high-fived, it would have been great. I would have been down the road already, but... But, uh... That is a situation that, uh, that happened. <laughs> that happened. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, we have official languages in Canada, right? English and French. I think it would be better if we just had one, but you know, I'm a little bit biased. I'm from English Canada. Uh, why I say that is if you have one official language that everybody communicates in, it makes business transactions happen a lot easier and better and quicker, right? It's easier to make transactions, easier to communicate, easier to make money. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't mean any prejudice by it. Like, I'm not saying someone's better than anyone else. I'm just saying we need to be able to communicate if we're going to do business. figure out what they're doing because they're not they're not twinning this highway here are they I hope that they are but it's, it seems like they're just widening it now if that's all they're doing that's a lot of money just to like not widen the road but widen the ditches beside the road like move that rock face further from the road is there a reason why they would do that like, look at that they're just blasting it further away from the road, but they're not making the road itself wider. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're going to put, uh, you know, four lanes of traffic, two in each direction through this area here eventually, you know, put a little barrier in the middle, uh, sort of divide it. Like, is it so that rocks don't fall on the cars or something? Strange, right? Seems like a lot of money and energy just to blast some rocks away when the road's not getting any bigger. Well, what do I know? I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. I'm just a guy ranting on the internet. Don't listen to me. Well, they filled in that side. Remember yesterday we drove down on, on there? I guess they're going to pack that down. Look at how they're actually like packing it down. Wow. Crossing border, entering Manitoba. Actually building a road to last. Must be on the must be on the Ontario side. That can't be Manitoba. Oh and the scale's open. Come on, Manitoba. 
I didn't mean it. Oh man, they hurt me. Flashing lights. Let's see what they want. I'm empty, so they should just let me roll right over. Some scales, when you're empty, they let you roll past, like beside all these trucks. But I'm, I'm always nervous doing that. I don't know which scales allow that. And they're not always very clear about it. And I always wonder, like, when a van trailer skips the scale, bypasses it, like slowly beside these trucks, how do they know he's empty if he doesn't drive over the scale, right? I always just drive over the scale anyway, just in case, whatever. That way they can get a close look at my truck, run my plates, run my numbers. Make sure everything's good before they let me go. I got nothing to hide, so. They want to see me a little closer, that's fine. They want to take a look at my logs. I'd rather they don't because I don't want to waste time. But I mean, I, again, if they want to, they're not going to find anything. I'd just rather not waste my time. Okay, tell me to go on. They see that I'm empty. Make sure everything's good, nothing's hanging off. The lights are all working. And green light. Sometimes they'll give you the red light just so that you touch your brakes. They want to make sure that your brake lights work. And that your brakes work. And then they'll let you go. Other times they'll give you the red light and you gotta come in and bring your papers. that time of year guys we gotta pull this thing out if you remember from last year uh, we own this it's a rental uh, we rent it out in the summertime this summer we're actually not publicly listing it but we do have a few rentals I think we have three rentals throughout the summer anyways that uh, we've already pre-booked these are uh, tomorrow well, not tomorrow we're getting this thing ready so in the next couple of days our friends can come and uh, rent the camper from us and then August long weekend, it's rented out. And also in July sometime, uh, our friends are renting it out as well. We're borrowing it. So it has three trips for sure on it this summer. Plus I'd like to take it out with my family. But it is that time of year and it's time to get this thing out of here, get it all ready to go so that when our friends come to pick it up, it's good to go. Now last year we uh, actually had it fully booked. We only listed it for rent June, I think. It was a ways into it was a ways into the season already, but almost instantly, as soon as we listed it, we had it uh, listed on Outdoorsy and RVZ to uh, sort of like, sort of like Uber type thing. It's an app where you can rent things. Sort of like Airbnb would be a good comparison. This thing was fully booked through the whole summer. So uh, last summer was really successful with that, but this summer with our uh, toddler running around, and we're trying to have another one. We don't just have we don't have the time to rent it out full time. So. It'll be uh, stored in here most of the summer, I think. Hopefully we can get it out and to enjoy it ourselves as well. But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just hooking up. I'm gonna pull it out of here, get it all cleaned up. 
And then I gotta put Old Blue in here and I gotta run home. This weekend, it's Friday today, I am gonna make it home for supper and get all this done. So we made a really good time today. We're gonna get home for supper and it's Mother's Day weekend. So it's all about the mothers in our lives this weekend. I hope you had a good one. Well, a little bit different in here now. You gonna be lonely, Old Blue? Everything's backwards, eh? You're on the wrong side. Uh, just squished it in here for now. I'm gonna do a thorough cleaning of this shop before I put the camper back in here. I gotta get this floor cleaned out underneath the truck. All of that floor cleaned out that was under the camper. I want this all cleaned out. So I'll worry about cleaning it up then. Feels so much bigger in here now though. Wow. <laughs> All right, it is 5.30. I'm gonna be home just in time for supper.